want to start with a concrete example of this what we're trying to prove tonight. Um, 2 to the 3 factorial minus 1 um, over 3 okay, is equal to 2 to the 6, which is uh, what, 64? So this is equal to 63 over 3, which is equal to 21. Right? Now that's the last small number where we have much luck, okay? So you see it's a member of the natural numbers. This is a member of n. Okay, it's a, it's a natural number. Uh, 3 factorial is 6. 2 to the 6 is 64. 64 minus 1 is 63. And 63 divided by 3 is 21. But just, just going up to 5 creates issues. 5 factorial is 120, and already we have an unpronounceable number, right? So we want to show that this is true for all odd, and we'll see why it, it holds for all odd. It, it holds for all odd natural numbers, this result right here. The only other way to state this that perhaps is easier in some people's eyes is you can state this as 2 to the x factorial in modular arithmetic form. Minus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo x. Okay, so we're gonna we'll 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 prove it in this setting in this setting right here. This says the very same thing as this, two to the x minus one minus zero is divisible by x is what this says, and this is just an, another way of saying it directly above an equivalent. Okay, now uh, there's a, a result I won't spend too much time on it, uh, but it's called the Euler totient function, and it says a to the phi of n is congruent to one mod n provided a and n are relatively prime. Now the a and the n actually are going to be, the, it'll be the uh, two and x will actually be the roles for these values, and so you guys you can see why we needed x to be odd, right? Because two and uh, uh, two uh, and any odd number are relatively prime or coprime, right? Okay. Now let's keep going. Now this is just one more example of what this phi function does, and again a lot of you might not need to see it. But the Euler phi function, what it does is it counts the number of values less than 16 that are coprime or relatively prime to 16. And of course, that would be all the, uh, what, all the even numbers? Uh, I mean, all the odd numbers, excuse me, you would have, what, one, three, no real need to enumerate, but we'll go ahead and do it just to make sure it's a count on all the numbers that are relatively prime to 16 that are less than 16. Of course, that would be this list that I'm trying to fit in here, 13, uh, 15. Now I'm hoping that's eight numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Okay. Now, just uh, just some examples of what the phi function does. Phi of p, this is almost a defining thing for a prime number. Because a prime number is what it is, there are p minus 1 values that are relatively prime to p less than p, otherwise it wouldn't be a prime number, it would be composite, okay? Now an important result here is that it, it's also true that phi of n, see if I can even draw a picture of what a phi looks like, uh, phi of n, if that's a phi for you, it looks more like a q, doesn't it? But phi of n is always going to be less than or equal to n minus 1. It's equal to n minus 1 in the event that n is prime, right? But you see, what that means, it's going to be one of these values. I probably should be using x here, I guess. But in any event, you can see why phi of x would have to divide x factorial because it's going to be a value, an integer value, that's less than x, right? And that certainly has to divide x factorial. So it ends up being quite important here uh, because now we can write x factorial is phi of x times m, where m is just some integer, right? And so what we can do right here is rewrite this this would be congruent to uh, 2. Now, again, I'm just going to replace x factorial with this result right here, okay? So you would get 2, uh, and I'll write this. I'll go ahead and do the uh, manipulations. Uh, here's, our, here's my feeble attempt at a phi here. Uh, phi at x, okay? And I'll go ahead and raise it to the nth power. This is just properties of exponents, folks, right? 
properties of exponents. Once you did, again, uh, remember a to the m. Uh, if you have a to the m um, n, that's equal to n copies of m copies, right? So n times m copies. So you have m a to the m n. Okay, a to the m n like that. Okay, that's the property we just used right here. But notice that this part is just congruent to one, right? So and let me let me just go ahead and finish here. This is minus one. So we get congruent to one minus one, which is of course equal to zero, and that concludes the proof. Because remember, that's we we decided I decided we would do it this way. This statement right here can be rewritten equivalently to this, and so we've just shown that two to the x factorial minus one is um, is congruent to zero, and that and that, and that completes the problem. And, and uh, I have no idea what two to the, you know, th in other words, they're saying that two. This is saying that two to the uh, one twentieth. Two to the one twentieth. Remember, five, five, five factorial is the next odd number, right? Five factorial is two to the one twentieth. Okay, that's congruent to zero. Mod five. Again, we went from being a, a case we could check to a case that's undoable. You'd, you'd have to use something, you know, uh, some some software, I guess. Uh, but that would just be literally impossible to do by hand, I think. Maybe maybe you could figure out a way, you know, uh, using you figure things out. You know, there, there's ways to do it with modular arithmetic if, if you get low low enough powers, I suppose. But but anyway, uh, this if you were just to do this the old-fashioned way without appealing to any special results, this is impossible. Okay, but it, this this proof here predicts that this would be true. So, and again, for all other odd, not just primes, like 2 to the 15th, 2 to the 15 factorial minus 1 would be congruent to 0 mod 15, also any other odd number. Okay, but anyway, it's QED D time right here. Uh, and uh, that's it, folks. Um, I liked it. I like the problem. The odd part is important. You can check it out for even values. It doesn't work for even values. Uh, two fact, just think of the simplest, the smallest even number is two. So two factorial is two, two uh, squared is four, four minus one divided by two is three halves. It's not a natural number, right? And four factorial, no, that's not even, you can't even check it with maybe 20, no, no, that's not doable by hand either. But in any event, uh, we have finished folks uh, and uh, that's all for tonight.